Hey everyone, so today I am going to discuss with you six properties that real numbers satisfies but matrices, if you take square matrices, matrices of order n cross n with real entries. Okay, so the property is that real number satisfies but this set does not satisfy. Okay, because it seems very obvious in real numbers but as you change your world from real numbers to world of matrices things are not that obvious over here okay well i'll be sticking to real numbers but this is also true if you take complex numbers or in general if you take any field so what is a field it's a set it's a nice set it's a set that satisfies some good good properties so if you don't know this the notion of field it's okay you can keep real numbers in mind okay so let's go to the first very basic property. The first property is about the commutativity. So commutative property. So we already know that if you have two real numbers, say x and y, then if you do x into y or you do y into x, we know that we always get the same answer. Okay. But uh, is that true in matrices? answer is no this property is not true in the world of matrices so for example if you take a simple 2 cross 2 matrix a as 1 2 3 4 and b as say 5 6 7 8 then you try to find a b and you try to find b a if you do this normal matrix multiplication this will come out to be non-equal okay so a b and b a in matrices need not be equal okay I am saying need not be I am not saying they are always not equal because suppose if you take if you take suppose x equal to say 1 0 0 2 and say y equal to 3 0 0 4 what are x and y they are diagonal matrices so if you find x into y or you find y into x they will come out to be equal so in general you take any two diagonal matrices they will always commute and in, moreover if you take any scalar matrix suppose if your m is a scalar matrix lambda times identity matrix then you take any matrix in the world say b matrix then you find m into b and b into m they will always be equal okay so for this matrices we have equality but in general matrices do not commute okay so that's the first property and what is the second property now this non-commutativity directly impacts the very famous basic formula that you have studied from your school so you know that what is a plus b the whole square it is nothing but a square plus twice a b plus b square this is what you have seen but actually if you try to expand this a plus b into a plus b what do you have you have a square plus a b plus b a plus b square so a square plus a b plus b a plus b square but we know that real numbers commute so therefore this becomes your b a is same as a b and therefore this becomes twice a b whereas in matrices we know that in general a b and b a do not commute so if you have two matrices then a plus b square is nothing but a square plus a b plus b a plus b square so this is the formula for matrices this is the formula when you have real numbers okay so this is not two times a b okay you can take actually you can take the same a and b and you verify this you do a plus b and then square and then you do this thing they will come out to be equal but if you take a square plus 2ab plus b square that won't be same as a plus b the whole square for the a and b which i wrote earlier okay so in general this is the formula for matrices and this is the one for real numbers so that was the second difference which one should observe okay now let's go for the third property now we know that if you take any two non-zero real number suppose your x and y are non-zero real number and if you multiply so your x is non-zero real number your y is non-zero then obviously the product is also non-zero product of two non-zero is always non-zero is that true in matrices answer is no okay so if you take a to b 1 0 0 1 okay let me take 1 0 0 0 and you take b to b 0 0 0 1 
obviously a and b are non zero matrices because at least one entry is non zero but what is a into b so if you do the product a into b which is 1000 0001 and if you multiply your answer will be 0000 which is a zero matrix so in matrices you may have two non zero matrices whose product is becoming zero once you study higher mathematics this are called as uh, this property is called as integral domain like so real numbers are integral domain that means if the numbers are non zero the product is non zero so real numbers set of real numbers is an integral domain but set of matrices is not an integral domain okay so that was one thing okay now let's go for the fourth property about the inverse so that you have already you already know this fact right so if you take any non zero real number what is the inverse of x inverse of x is 1 upon x because the product is 1 so if you take any non zero real number can you give me the inverse yes you take 1 by 2 so that the product will be 1 in matrices if you have a matrix a can you always give me a inverse such that the product is identity and the answer is no right you know that so when does the inverse exist when does the inverse exist so what you do is either you try to find the determinant if the determinant is non zero then the inverse exist or you apply your elementary transformations elementary row or column transformations or operations you apply this operations to the matrix and while doing the operations while reducing it into the gauss jordan form or gauss elimination form or reduce row reduced echelon form or echelon form if you try to do that and if even one of the row or one of the column becomes a zero that means all the entries in the row or all the entries in the column becomes a zero then that matrix is not invertible so these are the two ways there might be others but these are the two basic ways which one can see whether the matrix is invertible or not now let's go for another property now because of this inverse because of this inverse thing cancellation property does not hold in matrices now what is a cancellation property suppose if you have some a into b is equal to a into c where a b c are real number suppose your a is zero if a is zero then obviously both of them are equal but if a is non zero then what you can do you can multiply by 1 upon a 1 upon a in short this a gets cancelled whenever your a is non zero so this is called as a cancellation property is that true in matrices if you have say ab equal to ac can you say that b is equal to c answer is no why because we know that inverse need not exist when can you say this is true provided your a is invertible because if your a is invertible what you can do you multiply by a inverse so if i multiply by a inverse on both side i have a inverse ab equal to a inverse ac and because of associative property i can interchange the brackets this is called as associative property of matrices but what is this identity so identity into b equal to identity into c so if your a is invertible then only this is true otherwise this is not true so i should give you an example so if you take a to b say 1000 is a invertible no as you can see one of row or column is zero or the determinant is zero so a is not invertible and suppose if you take b equal to say 0001 and you take c equal to 0100 what is your a into b it's a zero matrix and what is your a into c it's also a zero matrix so your ab equal to ac but your b is not equal to c okay so ab equal to ac does not guarantee that b is equal to c in the world of matrices even though your a is a non zero matrix here if your a is non zero then yes cancellation property is true but cancellation property is true in matrices provided this a is invertible otherwise this is not true okay so yeah so this was the another property now let's go for the next property
and now let's go towards the last property of this session so if you take any non zero real number if x is a non zero real number then you take any power of x you take any power of x that is always non zero okay so that's the property that this sets satisfy but is that true in matrices if you have a non zero matrix then can you conclude that any power of a is non zero no you cannot conclude that so for example if i take a to be strictly upper triangular matrix let me take 3 cross 3 for simplicity then if you try to find a cube a into a into a that will come out to be a zero matrix okay so in matrices if a matrix is non zero you cannot say that is any power is non zero okay such properties is called as a nil potent so this is a nil potent set or this is called as a nil potent matrix and this is called as index of nil potency so whereas in real numbers you cannot find any nil potent element but in matrices you can find plenty of nil potent element another is 0 1 0 0 you find a square it will come out to be 0 okay so yeah, these are the six basic properties that one should know when they are dealing with matrices if you know some any other property you can comment that in the comment section and if you like today's session do not forget to like share and subscribe thank you